History of Kabankalan City Historical accounts reveal that there was no ancient Kabankalan as a settlement but the territory of the present city was inhabited by numerous hill tribes scattered along the Hilabangan River stretching from the mountain ranges toward the settlement of the lowlanders in Ilog. The hill tribes belonged to the Eta and the Indonesian groups who came earlier than those of the Malayans of Ilog. Little is known of the people living in the area of what we know today as Kabankalan. The first settlers of the city were people who migrated from nearby towns and nearby provinces across the sea. A little settlement was founded by Lyukkaju Tayom from Tigbawan, Iloilo, who discovered a place thickly populated with bangkal trees, hence the name Kabankalan. <coughs> the Spaniards arrived in Negros in 1565 and established a mission church in Ilog in 1584 bringing the Christian message to the hill tribes. At about this time, the Spaniards organized the different barangays into political units. The three barangays petitioned the government to transfer their barangays toward the area of Rong and established a town. The three capitanes, Senor Polito Moreno, Senor Vicente Rojas, and Senor Mariano Vingal moved their people, established a new settlement in the area of what is now the present city of Cabancalan, and elected Leocadio Tayong leader. The Capitanes served a term of one year. Only the Christian tribes joined the original three barangays. The government continued the pacification campaign to bring the other tribes to live in the town around the church and the convent. The pacification campaign of the Spanish forces during the period of 1838 to 1855 resulted to one of the most unfortunate and saddest tragedies in the annals of our history, the Carolan tragedy. The mass and suicide of Manyabog's people, it called Carolan tragedy. They preferred to die rather than to be subjugated or subjugated by the Spanish forces. The years after the tragedy, Cabancalan was plagued with many calamities, hordes of locusts, famine, diseases, and the mysterious burning of the municipal houses house in 1892 since its birth in 1825 despite the difficult years Cabancalan became a progressive barrio of Ilog <coughs> the revolution of 1898 which saw the establishment of the short-lived Negros Republic forced the people of Cabancalan to join the rest of the province to rise up arms against the Spanish government. The early years of the American occupation were marred with anti-American feeling associated with the Babylons, particularly with the nationalistic movement of Papa Isio, the recognized leader of the Pulahanes that showed terror not only in Cabancalan but also in the nearby towns. Because of this anti-American sentiment, the American authorities subjected the houses and persons to raids and arrest. This pacification campaign forced the people to reject Papa Isio and his Pulahanes. 
On February 13, 1907, the Pulahanis burned several houses and haciendas. <coughs> Despite the Pulahanis, Kabankalan became prosperous and strong enough to earn recognition of the insular government. Thus, the Philippine Commission passed Act of 1612 on March 14, 1907 which authorized the separation of Kabankalan from Ilog. <coughs> After the passage of the act, a special election was conducted. Lorenzo Zaiko was elected president of the town and Bonifacio Grande vice president. The elected members of the municipal council were Alijo Coloso, Marshal Garcia, Manuel Gar Garanchon, Manuel Garanchon, Leoncio Enchero, and Sabas Gariando. The other members were Lino Gardi, Lopi Manlapau, J. Peralta, Herbacio, Tori, and Gualberto Monteclaro. The first duly constituted municipal officials made historic oath of office on January 2, 1908. Pre-war, Kabankalan saw emerging developing or development of the sugar industry. Sugar mills or mascovado were put up in Hacienda Biarin and Hacienda San Isidro. The Second World War brought terrible destructions to Kabankalan. Sugar mills were destroyed, school buildings demolished and house raised to ground it brought havoc to the livelihood of the people. The post-liberation era concentrated on rehabilitation efforts, but the initiatives were purely self-help. Agricultural development was given impetus with the founding of Negros Occidental National Agricultural School or NONAS in 1948 and then became NOAC or NOAC at Barangay Kamingawan that spurred agricultural activities in the west in the eastern section of the town and with the establishment of the National Agricultural Resettlement and Rehabilitation Administration or NARA in 1950s at Barangay Tabugon that assisted the farmer settlers in the western section the so-called sugar rush in Negros Occidental prompted capitalists to put up the Southern Negros Development Corporation or SONIDCO in the late 60s and the Dakongkogon Rice and Sugar Mill Incorporated or DRSMI in the early 70s that provided milling factories to sugar farmers within the town and motivated them to expand their hectares to sugar production thereby placing Kabankalan at the crossroads of agro-industrial development and making it a hub of business and trade in Southern Negros. With only a rural bank serving the credit and savings needs of the town in 60s, Kabankalan now boasts of having a number of banks and other financial institutions maintaining offices and branches in the city namely Philippine National Bank or PNB, Equitable Philippine Commercial Bank or Equitable PCIB, Readers Royal Bank, Development Bank of the Philippines, Lang Bank of the Philippines, Rizal Commercial Banking Corporation or RCBC, Allied Banking Corporation, Banco San Cabancalan, Bank of Victorias, and Bank of the Philippine Island. Following the bandwagon effect, commercial establishments from Bacolod City and nearby towns put up their own branches in the city, adding more boom to the business atmosphere. The evangelization efforts began by the Mission Church in Ilog bore unprecedented result with the erection of Kabankalan as a separate diocese from Bacolod on February 11, 1988. Monsignor Vicente M. Navarra Didi was canonically appointed by His Holiness Pope John Paul II on recommendation of Papal Nuncio Bruno Torpigliani as its first bishop. 
At about this time, other religious denominations had already established churches around the city and in some instances to far-flung barriers. Since its creation as town in 1907, Kabankalan has dramatically leaped forward to become the most progressive and fast-developing municipality of Negros Occidental. On August 2, 1997, the people of Kabankalan ratified Republic Act 8297 which was signed into law by President Fidel V. Ramos on June 6, 1997 at Malacanang Palas, Manila, converting Kabankalan into a component city of Negros Occidental. Here's more! In early years, Kabankalan started as Barrio of Ilog, a neighboring town of the city today. When Kabankalan turned into a town in 1903, its first town president was Capitan Lorenzo Zaiko, but in mid-1907, a group of rebels called Pulahanes, led by Papa Isho, raided the town and burned all the houses. The settlers established the barangay form of government with which every group has its own leader, called the Capitan. In early years, Barak Kabankalan started as a barrio of Ilog, a neighboring town of the city today. When Kabankalan turned into a town in 1903, its first town president was Captain or Capitan Lorenzo Zaiko. And there is 32 barangays. And here's more. The good news is, Kabankalan City is a first-class city in the province of Negros Occidental. It prides itself as the largest city in terms of land area and the second largest in the entire Negros Island, next to Bayawan, with a total area of 69,734 or 35 or 69,735. 44 hectares. It is the sanctuary of 181,977 Kabankalanon per the 2015 census. It consists 32 barangays. Nine of them make up the city center while the other 23 are located in the outlining or outlying areas. The term Kabankalan was said to be derived from the word Bangkal, a kind of tree that lavishly grew from the place. The first settlers learned to establish a community and was able to form a barrio which was named Ilog. Through the years, despite the ravaging wars and internal strife, it finally earned its cityhood on August 2, 1997, in lieu of Republic Act No. 8297 and signed and declared by the then president Fidel V. Ramos. <laughs> Festivals Sinolog de Kabankalan In honor of its patron, Senor Santo Nino, this uh, week-long celebration is the city version of Ati Atihan held every third week of January. Kabankalan City comes alive with its impressive Mardi Gras with colorful customs and lively dancers joining the parade. Although often compared to Cebu Sinolog, it certainly has its own charm. And by charm, it means the people have their own way to keeping things fun by way of uling or charcoal. Best not get your branded and expensive shirts on unless you don't mind getting your outfit stained. It all started as a rivalry and celebration of the victory of the town's people once first battle and proved to be the last against the Moro pirates. It was said that the town defenders were surprised to see, to see the pirates carrying to the seashore 
and their vintas in a hurry to flee homeward. Curious to see what it was that scared of the fools, townspeople saw a small child atop the church tower waving his shining sword as to driving away the pirates. As the pirates, pirates fled in haste, the townspeople indulged in revelry, creating hilarious sounds on things they could hold on. Ujakan sa Kabankalan celebrated the same day as the Kabankalan City Charter Anniversary. This week-long festival is usually held between July 29 and August 2. This annual dance festival reflects the joyful and playful spirits of Kabankalanons. It also showcases the city indigenous products through agro-industrial fair participated by its different barangays. Like any other Filipino festivals, Several activities are scheduled within the week including street parade, talent contest, athletic meets, and Mardi Gras and fireworks for the final. Ujakan sa Kabankalan used to be a pre-sinulog pre presentation of the history, culture, and development through songs and dances, but nonetheless, it never pales in comparison to the major celebrations in the country.